Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Well, I've just returned from a, uh, a two-week business trip um, and I've just been playing around uh, with this Whisper transmitter that um, I want to get up and running for 20 metres. So I just wanted to spend tonight having a quick look at the decisions I made around um, the LEDs, um, have a quick look at the software and, um, and go from there. So in terms of what we're seeing here, it's pretty well in line with what I was originally thinking. Um, using the Nano uh, to drive some LEDs. I uh, wanted to have quite a few LEDs just to sort of have, um, uh, I guess, a, a, a thing just sitting on the desk, blinking away, doing something. Uh, the AD9850 is the DDS, uh, and then this little cheap, um, quite badly corroded, but never mind, um, GPS board here, which is providing essentially uh, time to the whole circuit. Uh, and what I settled on in terms of... Um, display wise um, I was initially looking at a, a 0 0.96 inch um, OLED and I sort of started to look at um, what was actually being displayed here and decided that I didn't actually need that so I've just stuck with a fully um, LED type device here um, so what we got here and we shall wait about 10 seconds and then we'll start the, uh, the cycle again and I can talk about what's going on right so in terms of the LEDs down here, these blue ones are, are showing the four frequencies um, that make up the um, the Whisper protocol. So if you look at the Whisper protocol, um, each one of those uh, is about 1.4 hertz difference. Um, and notionally, if you look at the uh, the protocol, uh, that's tone 0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and that's bouncing backwards and forwards uh, with about 600 odd milliseconds between them. Uh, up here we've got four green LEDs, um, that is the status uh, in terms of getting through the whole um, sequence for each transmission, uh, 25%, 50%, 75 and 100. Uh, I've got those set um, about 10 or so um, symbols less than uh, 25, 50, 75 and 100, uh, just so they're on a little bit uh, longer, uh, for example the 100% uh, the here. Red is for PTT, so it just indicates that the transmitter is transmitting up and running. Um, and then two uh, yellow LEDs here. Now the left hand one signifies that it's on a low power sequence, and the right hand one here, which is currently lit, is on high power. So what I'm thinking to do for a start, um, low power will be uh, uh, 50 milliwatts, or 17 dBm, and then high power will be 100 milliwatts, or 20 dBm. Um, and that information I've got now coded into the software, which we'll look at, uh, and that's what I'll start off with. Um, other than that, and look at the, the look at the uh, the hardware. Um, so again, look at the software in a sec. Uh, this little GPS here is sending out um, a whole series of NMEA um, sentences, um, and the one that we particularly want to look for in the software is the RMC sentence because the start of the RMC sentence um, has the time encoded uh, and then we can basically uh, look for uh, the minutes and seconds and then use that to uh, to run the whole uh, program here. So it's going to pause here and then we'll bring up the software uh, and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so this is the Arduino sketch that um, I've come up with. Um, I won't go into all the details, but I'll just give a, a high-level overview, and I'll, uh, I'll most certainly make this available on, on the blog. Um, I won't go into the defines here, but suffice to say, I've just defined the various, um, uh, what they call digital ports and the analog ports, and just given them some actual names to use uh, throughout the software. Uh, you can see here two arrays. Um, the first one uh, is low power whisper data. So this is the 162 um, pieces of information or symbols that make up the data word. This particular top one here is for low power or for 17 dBm. And then the bottom one here, also 162 um, symbols long, is for the high power. Uh, how these were generated, I will show you that um, after racing through the software here. But suffice to say it was used generating a program written by Andy Talbot, G4JNT, uh, uh, which was nice and easy. Um, if I forget to mention it later on, the, his program produces all the, uh, the symbols here, but they don't have 
the commas. So when you cut and paste it into here, you just need to add the, col uh, the uh, commas in after each number, but that's, that's hardly difficult. And as you can see there, they're either a zero, a one, a two, or a three, um, representing the four different tones um, that make up the, the Whisper protocol. Um, I won't go through here, just basically setting up the um, the serial port and the uh, 9850. But I will say the main loop here has two main functions. So either the transmitter is not transmitting. In other words, it's just listening to the data coming out of the GPS, uh, looking for that RMC word, uh, and then determining what the seconds and minutes is. And then working out if it's an even minute um, and either zero, one, or two seconds past the top of the, um, the minute to, to start transmitting. And the second part of that loop is um, actually doing the transmitting itself. So, looking at the first part, so um, it's a variable I got here which controls which part of the loop um, gets executed, uh, and that's this transmit variable here. So, at the moment, transmit. Uh, equals zero. So in other words, it's not transmitting. And here we are, we're listening to the serial port. So when serial data is made available from the GPS, uh, that'll become not equal to zero or greater than zero, and we can start to read it in. Now that information is, is, is read in character by character as it comes along and gets put into another array called um, sentence. Um, and each time a new character gets put into that particular sentence, uh, there's a quick test to see what it is. And what I'm looking for is carriage return. So there's slash uh, R, which signifies um, an ASCII character, uh, say again, carriage return. Once I see one of those, I then want to work out which of the NMEA words um, I've just now stored in the sentence. So there's a whole raft of those uh, NMEA uh, words. The one, I like, the one I'm after is RMC. So what I'm going to do, once this array, the sentence array has been populated, I'm then going to check positions 4, 5, and 6 to see if they respectively equal RMC. If they do, then I know I've got the right word. If they don't, I'm just going to keep going on through this process until such time as that is true. Uh, when it is true, I then go looking at positions um, 10 and 11, which store the minutes data. So in the 10th position is the 10s column, and the 11th position is the 1s column, storing the minutes. And then position 12 and 13, uh, as you can imagine, are the seconds. Again, okay, so position 12 will be the 10s of seconds, and position 13 is the 1s of seconds. So I just basically... Um, convert those two individual uh, digits into one particular number here, which I've called UTC seconds, and the second one is UTC minutes. And it's that data there that I then pull apart to see if it's ready or time more the point to start transmitting. Um, the protocol talks about transmitting on an even or just after an even minute. Um, and I've seen conflicting information, but it's it's somewhere within the four the first four seconds after an even minute. So I need to do a test to see if that particular minute is actually an even minute. So I divide it by two, and I check for the remainder. So any even number divided by two will give zero for a remainder. So that's the case. Then that's good. That's true. Uh, and in order to turn the transmitter on, or in other words, to set this transmit variable to 1, I need to have two things true. This part has to be true, in other words, it's an even minute. And the second part, any one of these three or statements has to be true. So, and one of these, that, or that, or that. In other words, seconds is either 0, so it's on, it's just spot on the even minute, or it's 1 second after, or it's 2 seconds after. Um, and that seems to work really well and is rock solid. Um, so once that is true, then we can then set transmitter to 1. Uh, in other words, we're now ready to start transmitting. The next time it comes through this loop, it's going to skip the first part because it's already been set to 1. And it's now going to execute um, the second part of that particular loop. Um, and I'll freely say here right now, this is just my way of implementing this. It is certainly not the best way. It is a way. 
um, it seems that, you know, it works for me and um, you know, I'm not a software engineer um, so you know it's, it's not it's not textbook but it works so second part here is uh, transmit equals one uh, and it's going to run one of two um, one of two then inner loops uh, it's either going to run the first one because the current power setting is on zero for this time through or it's going to run this one here uh, the high power version um, if power is set to one um, and that's those two orange lights toggling backwards and forwards so but first up before it gets to here it comes in here uh, it turns on the transmit LED um, and it sets a start frequency a random frequency between 14097 and 140972 which is the upper uh, or upper and lower bound of where the whisper transmissions take place in this case on the 20 meter band so I've, I'm taking a random start somewhere between those two limits uh, and my thinking there was to uh, to try and not stand on someone else who's also transmitting uh, on a, also transmitting a 20 meter whisper beacon um, so if we're both going random then theoretically you know, the chance of us be exactly on the same frequency are pretty slim um, and if they're on a uh, an integer value then again um, I'm kind of hoping that um, will be uh, will be different anyway, enough said and let's just assume that power for this particular cycle was on on zero or in other words on low power um, I then want to start stepping through that array and in this particular case it's going to be the low power array um, symbol by symbol so 162 starting at zero going through to 161 so that's exactly what's happening down here so we'll do the low power one which is this this portion here so starting with symbol equals zero I'm going to increment up to its equal to 161 one symbol at a time each time it does that it's it sets up the frequency of the DDS to be my starting frequency plus a small increment now the increment is an, is an increment of 1.4648 Hertz and how many of those increments is a function of what number is stored in that particular array and if you recall if I just back up again it's either going to be a 0, a 1, a 2 or a 3 so going back down again so in each particular case it's going to either going to be 0 times that 1 times that 2 times that or 3 times that added to our starting frequency so that's how we get our four discrete transmit frequencies which then comes out in the receiver as tones um, uh, for our whisper after it's, it's done that discrete frequency it then uh, updates the tone LEDs that's the blue LEDs so it sends to that um, function a little bit further down um, which number is stored in that array so it's going to either be 0 1 2 or 3 which then turns on the uh, respective LED later on I'm going to I do send it a 4 which turns everything off that's why there's a fourth one there I then straight away nip in and update the progress um, LEDs so I send it the symbol index in other words where it currently is between 0 and 161 and then um, by doing a bit of logic here it works out where it is is it less than 30 or is it between 30 and 70 or 70 and 110 and then turns on the respective um, LED as you can see here 25, 50, 75 or 100 um, determining on where it is uh, once it's finished doing that it then pauses for the, uh, the 0.683 seconds or 683 milliseconds before looping back up and starting again so um, 683 times 162 is roughly 110 seconds or just under two minutes um, I timed that just to make sure that the delays in executing all of this uh, plus that still worked out to be over 162 um, spot on the on the right value and it was so I didn't have to tweak uh, that value at all if it wasn't I would have adjusted that value to make it um, equal to what the standard needs to be once it's completed transmitting either the low power one here or the transmit um, whisper data I then turn the transmitter off 
I set all the Tony LEDs to zero, so all the blue LEDs turn off. I set the progress, the progress strip back down to zero, turn off the transmit LED, set the transmit um, variable back to zero, and toggle the power ready for the next time to go through. Um, and by setting that to zero, when it loops back through the loop again, it doesn't execute the transmit portion. It goes back into uh, listening to the GPS, working out of the right words there, working out of a sign of transmit, and then back into it again. Um, and that's it. So that's uh, the logic of the software. Uh, and like I say, just sitting below the main loop, there are a couple of functions um, driving, in this particular case, the tone LEDs, the progress LEDs, and then one more for the power LEDs. Only two, the other two yellow ones. Okay, so I'm not going to um, lay with that anymore. Like I say, I'll put that up on the blog. Um, we'll just pause now, and I'll use the camera to record uh, the software that's used to generate these whisper um, data words here. So back shortly. Okay, so um, before I show you the actual uh, program up and running to generate that data, um, I'll just tell you where I got it from. So uh, on the internet, I went to um, Golf4JNT. This is Andy Talbot's uh, website. Uh, I'll put this link up um, also um, in the blog, if I remember. And on this particular page here under JT Modes and Beacons is this application here, genwspr.exe. So generate whisper, I assume, data uh, executable. So all you have to do is just download that um, and put it somewhere. And then as we'll see uh, right now, uh, I'll just show you how to run that. But that's, that's the um, particular executable you're after from, from Andy Talbot. So uh, back very shortly. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty well in focus here. I can't zoom in anymore because um, I can't do a screen capture, unfortunately, of the of the command prompt here. Um, and if I zoom in any more, uh, the, the autofocus is going in and out. So hopefully you can see that there. So I've brought up a command prompt um, and I've CD to downloads and a, a subfolder I just call WSPR. Um, just get yourself to the folder where you have stored that downloaded Gen WSPR particular file. And once you've found that, so if I was to go do there, you'd see, um, where's it gone? Uh, here it is there. It's the Gen WSPR. So it's, this is the folder which contains it. And then in order to run it, you just have to go, um, so Gen WSPR is so the name of the file, space. My call sign, ZL2CTM, space, uh, my locator here, so RE78JR, uh, and then the power level. So um, I'll just pretend this was for the high power uh, data, so that's going to be 20 dBm. So once you uh, have typed in that, it's just a matter of going enter, and this is what it produces. Um, what we're interested in here is the encoded symbols uh, and as you can see there um, there goes all the data that we need to then cut and paste directly into our program but noting there's no commas so just a matter of there of highlighting all those uh, control c to copy uh, and then if we now were to go into um, the arduino ide we could then just go control v and paste those directly in and then like i say just run through and add a comma after each of those and that's it. That's all you have to do to, to generate that data. Um, I forgot to say when I was going through the software, I've, I've decided to, to hard encode that data um, as opposed to using a, um, a library and actually generate this data on the fly. Um, so that's just the option I've decided to take. Okay, well I'm going to say 73 is there. Um, you sort of just see the, uh, the oscilloscope up there just looking at the output of the, the DDS. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So next steps now will be to work on the um, to work on the transmit side. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, little um, modules, some pre-made modules coming in um, from AliExpress, which haven't quite turned up yet. So I'm going to look at playing around with those. But I think for the time being, I might just make a simple uh, little booster amplifier for the output of the the DDS. And then just put that straight into through a low pass filter into the antenna and just transmit over the next few days just to see if it can be picked up by some of the local 
um, whisper receivers but uh, that'll be the next steps and we can look at that um, as well as the uh, the wiring diagram um, at a later date but I hope that was sort of useful um, and like I say I'm sort of quite comfortable with the way the software is going and, and, and the way I've decided to to run the the, uh, the LEDs and the lights etc okay I'll say 73s and uh, we'll catch you next time cheers all